Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says the West has effectively declared war on his country by trying to destroy its economy. Meanwhile, President Putin has criticized the US and its allies for trying to cancel Russian culture, comparing it to the ceremonial burning of books by the Nazis in the 1930s. Today a real hybrid war, total war was declared on us. This term, which was used by Nazi Germany, is now used by many European politicians when they talk about what they want to do with the Russian Federation. And the goals are not hidden, they are declared publicly, to destroy, break, annihilate, strangle the Russian economy, and Russia on the whole. Today they are trying to cancel a thousand year old country, to cancel our people, I'm talking about the progressive discrimination of everything connected with Russia, about this trend that is unfolding in a number of western states, Tchaikovsky, Shostakovich, Rachmaninoff are excluded from concert posters, this is how Russian writers and their books are banned. The last time such a mass campaign to destroy unwanted literature was carried out, it was by the Nazis in Germany almost 90 years ago. The Arise News Hour. Now, as you've been hearing, President Biden has been in Poland today witnessing the impact of the war firsthand. Poland has taken in over two million refugees fleeing the fighting. Well, with us now is Dr. Marek Lakowicz, chairman of POSK, the Polish Social and Cultural Association here in London. He strongly believes that urgent Western military intervention is what Ukraine needs. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. And you've been following President Biden in Europe, Mr. Biden now in Poland, just leaving Poland, saying NATO has never been more united. Is that what East and Central European countries, particularly those that border Russia wanted to hear? Is that what you wanted to hear? Certainly not. I would like him to announce that NATO, or at least its members individually if necessary, are directly helping Ukraine. Military aid is needed and that would take at least the form of arms, but I believe it should go further and even help uh, Ukraine militarily. After one month of war, all we've heard is talking. That's what it boils down to. It's very nice, but unfortunately doesn't get us anywhere. The Ukrainians have already suffered terribly in their country. It is time we help them. Well, I mean, we, we heard new sanctions against Russia announced over the last day or so. Um, was President Zelensky right to say they came a little too late? Yes, I would say they're not only too late, it's too little too late, as Lloyd George once said. It, the problem is that sanctions, whilst they may have a long-term effect, for a very big country like Russia, they are of limited use. That's assuming there's no sanction breaking. And also, at the end of the day, they do nothing about the crisis on the ground. I repeat, there are civilians dying, the Russians are bombing, their armies are in Ukraine. We must do something. Well, they're doing something about the refugees, though. I mean, President Biden in Poland, your country today, as the world continues to assess the human cost of the war. Poland, of course, a country on the humanitarian front line. Quite right. Of course, taking the refugees by Poland was a very su superb gesture. And what's more, has been taken in without any camps. The people have been settled with families. It is an extremely pleasant gesture by them. And what's more, they've taken every effort to integrate the Ukrainians into their schools, which is a huge e uh, effort by the state. No one's denying that there's been an effort made for the refugees. The problem is that if the fighting continues and gets worse for Ukraine, there'll be even more of them. What we have to do is solve the root cause of the problem. Nevertheless, Mr. Biden meeting his Polish counterpart, announcing financial aid, how much will that help Poland manage these more than two million Ukrainians who've taken refuge there? The aid is very welcome. It's very nice of Mr. Biden to say so, and it is, of course, something that's necessary. Aid will help Poland and anyone else taking refugees. But the real point is, is Ukraine itself that needs the aid. After all, if Ukraine had more aid, perhaps fewer refugees would have to leave.
And there's been a disagreement. We, we heard our, our, our chief correspondent in, in Kiev talking about that. There's been a disagreement in the last fortnight between Poland and the U.S. when Poland said it wanted to transfer some fighter jets to a U.S. base in Germany uh, for them to be deployed in Ukraine, only for the Americans to reject it. I mean, will Mr. Biden's presence in Poland smooth over any such disagreements? These are minor disagreements in the sense that Poland and USA will continue to work together. However, there is a difference in policy. The US believes that at no, at no possible step should it intervene or should the West intervene in any form. And in this way, the war will uh, not escalate but may hopefully settle down. I personally mean the very opposite is true, that if the West doesn't intervene, then sooner or later the Ukraine is likely to lose, and if it does so, the cost will be enormous, and the knock-on effects will be enormous as well. Therefore, I disagree with, Mr. with President Biden's policy. I believe Poland was the right to, as a minimum, I stress these words, as a minimum, to transfer the minimum arms they were suggesting to Ukraine. How important is it in terms of the profoundness and the symbolism for the US president to be there in Poland just 60 miles from the border with Ukraine for him to be seen there? This is very important. The fact he was in Rzeszów, of course, is a very important gesture and it's a marked contrast when President Kaczynski had his funeral no one turned up. Um, from the West, that means that it shows that there is support for Poland, that NATO, as President Biden here correctly stated, is indeed more united than ever. The fact he's gone to the near front line in NATO in terms is, of course, very encouraging. So from this point of view, yes, I think he made a very good gesture. We always appreciate your analysis. Uh, Dr. Marek Lakovic, chairman of POSC, the Polish Social and Cultural Association here in London, thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you for inviting me.